Okay, so who is ready to make a buttload of cards and use up what you've got in your stash? <laughs> so, um, I've got this idea and I can't wait to share it with you. I've been so excited all day. I've been crafting the whole entire day today. My husband gave me the day alone, away from the kids, in my office, and I wanted a simple design that I could really just bosh out the cards because I've got a lot of birthdays I keep missing because I'm not looking at my diary. <laughs> I don't know if you're doing the same thing, but I am just not paying attention. I don't know what day of the week it is. I don't even know half the time what the month is. I know we're in 2020 and we're in lockdown. <laughs> That's about all I got. And so I keep looking at my diary and going, crap, <laughs> I've missed another birthday. So I've realized that I just need a ton of birthday cards. I need boy ones, girl ones. I also need sympathy cards because this is a really rubbish time and there's a lot of people going through a lot of really sucky stuff so I thought right I need to actually do a Jennifer Maguire and I need to pump out a ton of cards in one go so I started out by using some um, card layouts I went into this one website which is called um, card maps I believe I will link it on the screen um, and basically I started following this lady ages ago and I constantly forget about her but I started following her ages ago when I was doing scrapbooking when I first started out with paper I started with scrapbooking and she does um, scrapbooking page layouts and I will link that on the screen as well it's also linked to the same website but I kind of started out with some of her ideas and was kind of playing around and just trying to kind of get the mojo going because it wasn't really working for me and I ended up coming up with my own little page layout for my cards and I am so <laughs> crazy excited. I really hope you're proud of me because it's not often that I get a really great idea that works really well and you can tell it works really well because I've just pumped out a buttload of cards. <laughs> so I'm really really pleased or in this country they'd say chuffed with, <laughs> with myself. I'm so proud of myself because I love this little layout and all it takes is a few sheets of designer paper and one piece of A4 card. Now I'm doing it in inches purely because it was just too crazy scary and complicated <laughs> in centimeters. I love one eighth of an inch. I love that border on things so I have done it in inches. Um, so what I wanted to do was use up my 6x6 paper pads. I've got so many 6x6 paper pads. I'm so addicted to paper. Oh my word. I am embarrassed. I debated, and I've not done it, but I debated taking some photos of my shelves in my office because I have a serious problem. I have got a mental amount of designer paper in my office. And a while ago, I'll link this video down below. I'll try and link it at the end as well. I did a video on using up your designer paper and having a card that could make use of it because we all have some and it's nice to be able to put it on a card and see it all without feeling like oh you're covering it up and it's not it's going to waste oh I'm babbling anyways this is a card that's going to use up your designer paper and show it off and it is also going to use up all those embellishments that you have got stashed away <laughs> because I don't know if you're also like me but I like to hoard embellishments especially from AliExpress and I've got so many so I'm going to share with you how you use those and a 6x6 card you can use as big as you like on them so let's get started okay these are your measurements I will also put these in the description box for you so you've got your paper, so this is for a 6x6 card. So you'll need a 6x6 inch card base, and you will need some designer paper, and a bit of card that will match your designer paper. So your measurements are going to be um, these ones here. I'm not going to read them out because I'm going to say them again when I do them. But you can screenshot this if you like. If you like to have a little picture next to it, I will also put it in the description box for you. So basically, whatever we cut out of the designer paper, we are going to do one eighth of an inch bigger on our cardstock that's going to match. So I've already gone through this paper pad. Yes, it looks a little bit rough. I can't be bothered to find my scissors and cut that little bit of tape that goes to the side. I just rip it open. <laughs> 
so forgive me for that messy looking cover. I've picked these four that I want to use on my card today. And I am going to use one of the bolder prints. Well, they're all quite bold, aren't they? I'm going to use one of the bolder prints for the background of my card. Um, so let's get started. I think I already said let's get started. So <laughs> we're doing it again. It's Saturday night. I've had a fantastic day alone crafting, so I'm in a fantastic mood. Um, all my cardstock, my base cardstock, comes from Lime Tree Craft, which is here. I'll link them down below. They're a fantastic small business in the UK and I buy all my card bases and a lot of my um, colored card stock from them. I just love the quality. I love how thick it is. It's absolutely fantastic. I've got this 12 by 12 pearlescent card which I'm going to use today. So as you can see it's quite shiny. They do a range of different card stocks and different thicknesses. This one here is 300 GSM. So I like the thick stuff for my card bases. They also sell um, plain white, they do black, they do I think ivory, they probably do some different colors. They also do 24 by 12 inch cardstock. They're fantastic. So my plan for these cards, or what I've done so far, is I just cut it straight in half and score it, and there's my card base for my six by six inch card. So that's all I'm doing is I'm taking some scrapbooking 12 by 12 inch card and cutting it and scoring it. So another thing this card is great for is using up your <laughs> sheets of A4 card stock. So I have been, I mean you've got to be like me, please tell me you're like me. I have been shopping on Facebook like crazy over the past couple of years. And anytime someone posts a bundle of A4 card stock I'm like yes, I'll have it. <laughs> so... I've got a lot of random bits of cardstock and I'll have one sheet of one color, maybe another sheet of another color. And this is great for matching with whatever papers you've got um, if you've just got a bundle. So here's my little bundle. <laughs> and I've just kind of grabbed this at my office. I have probably about, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 times this amount of cardstock. <laughs> um, I think I have an addition to cardstock as well. But I just grabbed this big bundle and I found something for every single one of my bits of designer paper. Now I'm gonna apologize for talking so much, but I felt like it's been a long time since I've done a video like this where I just have a proper fun chat with you. I've done a lot of voiceovers lately where I've just kind of rushed through it to make sure it's just the tutorial and I felt like it's Saturday night, we're in lockdown, I want to actually hang out with you. So that's why I'm chatting a bit more tonight. I want to actually have a really nice time with you and I really hope that you have fun with me as well. Okay, so to get started, we're going to start cutting our backing bits of paper. So remember, we've got our measurements for our paper. Follow the one that says paper or designer paper, not the one that says backing card. That's the stuff that we're going to cut out the solid color. So our, our paper, I'm going to use this one as my backing image. I've got this trimmer here. This is a Stampin' Up trimmer. It's the latest, most current one. I've tried a lot of trimmers in my day. And there are a lot of things with Stampin' Up that I find a bit frustrating in terms of it being very expensive when I don't think it needs to be so expensive. But this trimmer I can't fault. I've had it about six months now and I love it to bits. If you push it all the way to the edge, that is six inches right there and it cuts your six inches, and it's so awesome that it does that, because I can cut up all my 12 by 12 cardstock into six inch squares in no time at all. For doing this card, all I did was took my 12 inch piece of paper, stuck it in, and just cut it straight down. So it's really nice, and then you can flip it that way and score it. So I'm really happy with this trimmer. I'm sure there's lots of other ones out there that are great. This is the one that you'll tend to see me using or you might also see me using the tonic one. The tonic one, the blades are very hard to get a hold of. So the tonic one is really difficult to get blades for. They just released some more, so I got another two blades, but they had a maximum of two per purchase. So that was a bit gutting. Um, but I also really like this one, although it doesn't have the same cool function as the Stampin' Up! one where you can stop it at the six inch mark there. Okay, that's a side note, side track. So we're gonna measure it at five and seven eighths, and we're gonna cut it on both sides. So that's our backing bit there. Then next we're going to cut our five and seven eighths 
by one and a quarter. And this one here is going to be a strip that will probably run vertical down your card. So you want to think about the design and the pattern that you're going to use. Then we need one that is going to be three by three. The three by three one is going to be the one that's going to sit on the top. Um, well, depending on what you feel like doing. It doesn't have to sit on the top. And then five by two. Now the thing to point out as well, just to make you aware, is that if you've got double-sided designer paper, you could always flip it over and use the other side and you're gonna get even more use out of your six by six paper. So that's our last strip there. So this is all that's left from our four sheets of designer paper. Is just these bits here. I'm gonna save them in case we need them for later on. Now we're gonna move on to our backing card and as I said before this is all one eighth of an inch bigger than our first measurements and you're gonna get the whole of this card out of one sheet of A4. Standard UK size A4. So again we're gonna cut it six inches which again with my paper trimmer I just literally shove it all the way over that six inches. Then I can flip it, shove it straight to the edge, and now I've got six inches. Now because I've got the six inches from what I've just cut, I can then go straight into cutting six, <laughs> this should be one and three eighths, not six and three eighths. That would be a very tiny little strip. So let's go and put a one in there, <laughs> sorry. Please make note of that, it's got to have a one in there. So I'm going to go to one and one, two, three eighths, which is just one of the larger notches down from a quarter of an inch. So then we've got that one there. That's our scrap. Then I'm gonna go into five and one eighths. I'm just gonna go and do the bigger one first so that I don't then muck up. I'm doing this bottom one here before that one so that I have make sure I have got all the paper for it. So this is my five and one eighth by two and one eighth. So that's my strip there. And then I'm going to go and do three and one eighth by three and one eighth. So when we're all finished, this is all we have left. We just have these bits here. Keep hold of this scrap because this is really useful if you've got a border punch for punching a really nice border and adding on to your card. And I'll share with you how to do that. I'm gonna keep these pieces because I could potentially use this as a focal point on my card. Um, any scraps are good, but this is literally all you're left with when you're done. So here are all the pieces that we've just cut out and now we're just gonna start adhering them together. So we're gonna mount them all onto their respective backing bits. Now you will see me use a few different adhesives. Whatever you've got is gonna be fine and whatever you've got is gonna work great. This isn't a video about buying new stuff, getting more stuff, it's about using what you've got in your craft room, using it up and making the most of it. So I've got this Scotch ATG gun. I've forgotten that I've had it. I've actually got three of them because I used to run card classes and I've got a load of tape from them. I found a company in Reading here in the UK and I found if I bought in bulk it worked out to about £2.50 or so per roll and I can get several cards out of each of these rolls. This is just a glorified beastly mini runner essentially. You'll see me using this because it is cheap and efficient. Um, these ones, the pink ones I just shared with you are from Every Crafts a Pound so they're £1 for one of these. Um, whatever you've got is going to work. If you've got um, tape, use your tape, double-sided tape. Use a glue stick. I'm a big fan of glue sticks. Use what you've got. I've got a lot of different liquid glues. You'll probably see me use a couple. Um, I'm going to use this to adhere all of my pieces down. The way it works is that you push the button in and you drag and pull. And it works just the same as a little tape runner. So I'm going to go ahead and mount all of these. 
and then we will mount this one to the paper and I'll show you with you what adhesive I use for that. Okay, so we've got all those adhered and now to stick this on the front of my car base because it's the exact same size I'm going to use liquid glue just so that it then I can line it up and have a bit of wiggle room and get it exactly on there exactly right so I've got my favorite Nouveau um, Deluxe adhesive I love this one I also have the cheaper version which is this one here the Nouveau tonic tacky glue or sorry, the, just the tonic tacky glue. I also have some uh, mono, Tombow mono glue. Use whatever you've got. I find a liquid glue nice and easy because then I can, whoops. <laughs> um, oh gosh, pay attention here. I'm trying to make sure I'm under the camera. I like a liquid glue just so I've got that bit of wiggle room. Now this is running low, so it's a bit difficult to get out. But I'm just gonna put some glue on the back. I hope you don't mind me chatting more with you. I try not to chat too much because I know it can be a bit annoying when you just want to learn what you're doing. But I felt like it's Saturday night, we've been in lockdown. I think I've just got verbal diarrhea. I've had a lot of me and children and not a lot of me and other people. So <laughs> I think it's coming out tonight. Right, so I'm gonna make sure you pay attention to which way your card base is going. If you've got a pattern that is going to need to go upright, and I just literally stick them together. I'm squishing them with the sides of my hand and then I'm gonna run my fingers along the edges and just make sure that I'm pressing that down and then I'll flatten it and give it a nice firm rub. So there we go, we've got our front panel stuck onto our card base. So the next thing is completely up to you. So this bit you can decide whatever you like to do. I've got these three panels and the idea I like the most, that I've done the most on my cards, is obviously this strip here runs six inches. So it can go either this direction or that direction on your card. Well, depending on whether you cut it with a pattern, that might need to go in one of those directions. I've then got this slightly chunkier panel. I quite like to sort of stick it somewhere around there. And either this one can overlap or you can put it in the corner. Um, but we're kind of going to go for that design today. Now, remember I talked about this little piece here. When we cut it, this was our scrap that we cut off of this piece here. I was getting confused there for a second. I thought it came off that one. It came off this piece here. So you can see it's six inches long. But it works perfect for cutting to stick on the back of this panel if you want to use it on there. That or you could easily use a slice from this one here that we've got left over. So, I've got some border punches from Stampin' Up. Um, this one my friend Anel obviously gave me. <laughs> and I'm gonna use this one today. They make a really great little pattern. All you do is stick them in. Loads of companies make these kind of border punches. You don't have to buy Stampin' Up ones. I know they can be difficult because you do need a demonstrator to purchase them. I don't know if they've got either of these versions still in stock but all you do is line it up and punch it and then you put it back in line it up with the pattern underneath and punch it again and then you get this beautiful little border on a bit of scrap cardstock now you could really use anything if you want to have a border if you've got pinking shears that'll give you a nice little um, edge if you've got children's craft scissors that will work if you are skilled with a craft knife, you could cut a little pattern in. You don't have to have a punch. This is what I'm choosing to use today. Now, firstly, I'm going to just trim it down a bit so it fits my card a bit better. You could trim it when you're done as well. And one of the other things I love to do is to make this stand out a little bit more. I'm going to add a bit of shimmer to that edge. So I'm just going to grab a bit of scrap paper or card. Um, this just happens to be what's behind my desk. 
Um, this is board from work. It is mount board from uh, picture framing. I've got my DIY Wink of Stella in my little Arteza pen. I'll link that video tutorial down below if you want to learn how to make your own Wink of Stella. Now this Arteza pen does leak a bit, so I'm just kind of grabbing what's in the lid. And I'm just going to rub it along that edge and add a little bit of extra sparkle to that bit of paper. So if you can see that sparkle on there, just a little bit of sparkle, just a little bit of something extra. Okay, so a quick little side note. You'll notice in a second that my hands have no nail polish on them. I filmed this video and then I realized that when I focused in on my shimmer on the edge that I forgot to focus back on my card, so I had about 10 minutes of blurry footage. So I have just refilmed it and kind of added it along with the commentary that I was already doing in the initial footage. So I do apologize, there is a little bit of a weird hand swap going on. Now I'm going to take my little strip here and I'm just going to add some glue along that bottom edge so that I can adhere that little strip to it. Now I will try and link everything below, so I'm going to have loads of samples to show you towards the end. I will try and link everything down below that I can. Obviously I can't really link Stampin' Up! stuff, but anything that I've used I've got from AliExpress or Amazon, um, anywhere like that, I will do my best to link it down below for you. Always do check out my description boxes because my description boxes will always have loads of extra information in there for you. I've got a Facebook group, so if you want to share what you've been making, um, that you've been inspired by my videos with, then you can ask to join that group. Please make sure to answer all the questions, otherwise I probably will not approve you. Only because it kind of weeds out the slightly dodgy people that ask to join that have nothing to do with crafting. Right, so we've got that little edge on there, which is quite nice. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick my little strip down. And again, you could use liquid glue, you can use your tape runner, glue stick, whatever works for you. At the end of the day, oh, look, it's just run out. <laughs> At the end of the day, I figure, you know what? No one's going to hold on to a card forever. So if you use an adhesive and it starts coming off, it really doesn't matter. It's not like a scrapbook. So use what you've got in your stash and use it up. Because otherwise, you'll look like me, where you've got an absolute ton of stuff and you haven't used anything up yet. So that's, that's what my mission is. Okay, I'm gonna share with you how to refill this because it has come completely empty on me in my video. So I'm gonna share with you how to refill one of these in case you don't know and you own one. So to start, you open it up, take off the old reel, so you push that little lever, pop this open. Skip past this please if you don't wanna watch how you reload one of these. This just twists off and pops up, and then you pull the old discarded stuff off. This is my box of refills. This is what I've got from the shop in Reading, and it comes full of tapes. So you take your new one out, you pull it, and then I always just double check, but nine times out of ten it's that side that's sticky, and I'm gonna stick it down until it clicks. Now if you, ha sorry I should say, if you have one that is slightly smaller because you can get really fat ones, you'll have this adapter here and it says this side up. Make sure you've got that on because that keeps the tape roll up and it makes it not go wobbly and wonky. So you kind of sometimes just have to play around until it clicks into place and get a bit of a <sighs> sticky mess in the process but that is part of the fun. And then you just go over the top, follow the arrows, over the top, underneath, and around. Now you can see I've got way, way too much here. What I'm going to do, this bit turns and you don't need to push that little lever to make it turn. I'm going to stick it through. There's my little notch. And everything just fell off my desk. <laughs> oh, please also tell me that you are crazy and pile loads of stuff on your desk like I do. Okay, so you've got that little notch there. This green bit here is very sticky. That you're just going to push against that side and stick it. Okay, and it should stick mostly. Then you're going to turn this. I like to hold 
this one side while I turn it to make sure it's nice and tight. Make sure that green bit is going under. And I turn it and turn it and turn it until it gets tight. And I make sure that this little bit here is resting on the back of that tape nice and high. So now it's as tight as it will go. It won't go any further unless you push that button in and then it will move. So I've turned it as tight as it will go. I'm gonna then stick this back on and then turn it to lock it. And now it's ready to go. So again, I'm like, do I have anything to stick down? <laughs> We're gonna stick this one down. So I'm just gonna run this along the back of this and it just goes on just like normal. Now one thing you can do which you'll see on some of my cars is you can add a bit of an embellishment on your little strip. So on some of my samples that I'm going to share with you I ran some thread around the edge of it and all I did was put a bit of sticky on the back took my thread. These ones are from AliExpress. I've got a whole ton of different metallic threads. They came ginormous like this for around two or three pounds and this will last you your whole entire life of crafting, but it's metallic thread. I got these ones from Stampin' Up. I think these two cost me around five quid. This thing cost me around three quid. So I've got one of these giant bad boys in every single color, and I love it for doing things like this, where you can kind of wrap it around, or you can bundle it up and stick it on the back. You'll see both those techniques coming up. So I'm gonna stick that one down on my card. like so and then we can go ahead and stick our last little panel on the top now again you can get as fancy or as simple as you like but this is a nice way to use up that designer paper and really show it off and have it showing in all the way all the different ways or in all the different versions that you've got on your card now next you could think about whether you want to do some punches um, and stick a nice beautiful punch on there and make use of that scrap bit card so for example, I've got this sunburst punch again from Stampin' Up. I really do like their punches. You could do a little punch like that. I've got a little stamp set that's round. This one here, and you could stamp a little sentiment onto a bit of matching card, like so. And then you could punch that out as well. So I've got another one and three quarters inch punch. You could line that up in there. Um, and that could go on there and you could have like a little sentiment like that, add a few jewels and a few diamonds on, could look quite nice. So we could stick that on there and we could pop it up on a little bit of dimension. So I'm going to just stick these down. This is just a quick and easy little sample that you could follow to really just get those cards out, make use of your supplies, get those cards out, get them in the post to all those people you've forgotten about. <laughs> oh gosh. <sighs> hope I'm not the only one forgetting about everyone. <laughs> oh, and friends, if you're watching and you've had a birthday and I haven't sent you anything, feel free to send me a little reminder or keep an eye on your post. It might be coming. I've got some foam squares here. These are from Alina's shop on AliExpress, who I design for. These are squares. They're mega sticky. If I didn't have hundreds of Stampin' Up! dimensionals from when I used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would only probably buy these ones. I really like them. They are a little bit thicker than Stampin' Up! ones, but they are very sticky and they come off of the paper really nice. They're easy to cut. I'm really happy with them. So I'm just going to stick that in the center of my card and try and make sure that it's the right way around. Now the other thing you could do is stamp like a really cute little image in there to color. Like the in this set it's got like a bird, bunny and a deer. You could color those in, color in the tree. You know, bring on the sunshine is quite, <laughs> quite applicable for this time in the world. Um, and you can stick that on. To finish off this card, I think I'm going to add some diamonds. I've got these sticky sheets here. And oop. I am just literally going to pop some diamonds on this panel here. And then that kind of finishes off that card. Now I'm going to share with you some of the other ones I've made and briefly describe how I've made them. 
If you don't want to hear how they're made or you only want to hear how one or two of them are made, you can skip to the end and see photos of all the cards that I've made. So I'll post photos at the very end of the video so you can skip through this bit if you don't want to hear me talking anymore. Okay, so this is today's work and this isn't even all of it. I have cut, I think I've got another 10 bases for cards. I've got a whole, I think about eight cards for a male or masculine or boy-like cards. Most of these are girly cards and so I'm going to share them with you and I've also got a couple boys in here but I have got several more to do. So this was my first card that I did. I used a couple dies from Surprise Creation, these circle ones which come in a nice set. These ones here, I'll link them down below. I wanted to use the circle dies on my card and then I found very quickly that I couldn't actually craft as fast as I wanted if I was die cutting loads. So I've got another one of those scalloped ed edge punches down here. Some of that twine that I was sharing with you earlier, that thread. These little gems are from Alina's craft shop and I've just stuck that all together. So that was my first one that I did. The second card I did I stuck a little doily on, I stuck my little square up to the top right, stamped a sentiment, did a couple more squares um, with an eighth of an inch difference, so I got a border, and then stuck some pearls along the bottom. These flowers are from um, AliExpress. I've got a whole huge bag of embellishments, so I was going through them all and I was making use of them. I've got a little um, pearl on the top there that I've glued on, and again I've used that Surprise Creation die on the center. Next up is this card here. Again, this is another little embellishment from AliExpress, a felt glitter butterfly, and my strips. I love my tailored expression strips. If you've not watched me before, I have got these tailored expression stamps and um, matching coordinating dies. These I ordered in from the States, directly from Tailored Expressions, and I love them and I use them all the time. I basically stamp out loads of the sentiments in various colours, on different card stocks, in different inks, some embossing inks, some regular inks, and then I just cut them out and you get about 30 sentiments per thing and I keep them all in this little tin. I go through this tin and I stick them on my cards. This is the most handy thing. You will see me using these all the time because they cost me a fortune so I want to make use of them but also they are the most practical thing I've ever seen in my life in terms of card making. So anytime you see one of these strips it's a tailored expressions stamp and strip die. Now here you can see that twine again. This is the pink twine which is this ginormous roll here. I've got this massive roll that comes out over the top of the roll. It's enormous. I've used it so much and I still have a lot left. So I use that on there and then I use three different size gems here at the bottom of my cart. Next I have this one here. This tag I got in a little bundle of tags from Natasha Foote on YouTube. We did a little fun exchange ages ago and she sent me a bundle of fun stuff to play with and these tags have sat on my desk for a little while so I've made use of them. There's that metallic thread again, the pink one. This is a um, Sorrentino, a Sorrentano um, gorgeous girl uh, little embellishment I've stuck on. Again another Taylor Expression sentiment strip and I just used a tag on the front of my card, stuck some coordinating little pearls that I got from AliExpress onto the bottom of that tag and that completed that card. Right, a while ago I did an AliExpress haul and some of the comments I got from people were ones where I could picture them laughing at me <laughs> as in good luck using that on a card. I ended up with some ginormous flowers and I said I was going to find a way to put them on the card. So I kind of feel like going back to high school and be like, in your face, I did it. <laughs> I have created these cards and I used the ginormous flower which worked perfect on my six by six inch card. So there. <laughs> I'm really not annoyed by the way, so please don't be offended if you were one of those people. Um, <laughs> I was desperate to use it and prove you all wrong that I could use these giant flowers that I got from AliExpress. So. They've got little diamonds in. They came like this. I hot glued them onto my front of my card and I only used one strip. So I did not 
use the other two panels I created on these four cards. I just used the one strip that went six by six, or sorry, six inches along um, by the two inches wide, I believe. I had some of this left over from a Stampin' Up! kit that I glued on there. There's my little twine, and that's my first card. Then I've got this one here, and I've left this blank intentionally because I fully plan to use one of my sentiment strips from Tailored Expressions to stick just here, but I didn't know if I wanted to use it for a birthday, or a sympathy, or a wedding, or a new baby. So I've left this blank, and I will put a sentiment on right before I give it to someone. This cardstock paper here is from The Works. I bought it ages ago. They don't sell it anymore, but if you watch some of my videos from about a year ago, I was obsessed with this cardstock paper, so I used it a lot. <laughs> Lastly, I have this one here, which is the exact same as the last one, and again, I will stick a strip down there. Then we moved on to the next size flower. <laughs> so I got these flowers as well, which were also big. Now, a lot of these I'll probably have to hand deliver or pay a bit of extra postage um, to send them because they are quite dimensional and big, <laughs> as you can see. But I love the flowers, and I loved using them. So I know a couple of people that have got babies on the way, so I thought I wanted to make a little baby card. And these little butterfly gems down here are from AliExpress as well. Now I've done the exact same card as that one, but I have done it with slightly different blue in the background. And I found a peachy colored flower that matched exactly. These flowers came in a bundle from AliExpress and I just got the mixed colored package. And then I found some butterflies in my little mixed package from AliExpress that matched this one. So I loved how this one turned out as well. You can see those butterflies there. Then I've got this one. I've taken that twine and I've stuck it, bundled it up, used a glue dot, stuck it behind that one, and then hot glued this flower on. These flowers are also from AliExpress. I got all three of those bundles of flowers all together and I have nearly used every one of them. So I'm going to be definitely ordering some more. I might wait a little bit longer until flights pick up a bit more and AliExpress gets a bit faster uh, but I did that one here and I love it then I've got this one here which has got some green behind it so I used the green flower I also used a bit of this um, pink sort of ribbon from my stash and I've got that metallic thread again and I've done a sympathy card this one again all of my cards either open up or they open to the side. Now this one I was dead proud of myself for. I have left this one blank because I might use it as a sympathy card or I might use it as a birthday card, but these leaves I bought, I don't know if you're like this, where you buy stuff on an impulse and you think, I've got to have it, it's so cool and so pretty. I ordered these leaves from AliExpress and I think I got another kind of leaves as well. I think I ordered two different kinds but I had to have them because they were so cool. They are made of metal. I can't remember how many you get in a pack. I have a feeling it's probably 10, but they are metal leaves and they kind of look naturally distressed. You can hear them. So they're not overly heavy, but I mean, all together, they're decently heavy. I've been wanting to use them for ages. You can see the dimension you get in them and I just didn't know what to do with them. So, I stuck them together, kind of squished them, and then hot glued the crap out of the back of them. So if you could see behind, there's a lot of hot glue behind there, and it's not going anywhere. And I've got this metallic thread behind there, and then that starburst punch, and I love it. I love how this kind of comes together. It's got that kind of nature theme to it. And again, it's using those strips, just placing them in a different order. And I've got a totally different looking card. So I'm really, really happy with this one. I actually think it might be a birthday card for my mother-in-law, but her birthday's not until October. So I've got a little while to wait. <laughs> now, lastly, I have got my boy card fronts. Now I would have done a heck of a lot more as I said, I have got all the stuff cut and ready to go for another 10 cards. However, I kind of ran out of time after doing this all day long. So I will post photos on my Facebook group when I've got them made. I might try and share them at the end of a video on one of my next videos. But I thought it was really important to do some kind of masculine themed cards as well. However, I really wanted to just get online and share this video with you and, um, and share what I've done so far. Otherwise, you might be waiting another two weeks for this video to come out. 
these are the boy ones I've done. I've got this paper pad that I picked up in Canada. It's like a craft paper pad with all kinds of different colors and I've done the exact same thing again. I've cut my three strips, my three chunks. I've got this star, which you've seen on one of my last videos. I stacked it four times. I used three layers of craft card stock and one layer of glitter cards. And this is a star from Surprise Creation. And then I've also got this square, which is from Surprise Creation, but this one I backed on some foam and just stuck it up on top of that square there. And I thought it was quite good because I haven't used any of these yet. Um, but I love this. Another year closer to Velcro shoes. <laughs> that was really awesome. I've got a guy in mind for this card. So these are just quite simple, basic cards. But I wanted to share with you how these strips can also tie together to make a more masculine looking card as well. So that is the end of my video. Those are all my cards. If you'd like to see all the cards, they're all on the screen now. And you can have a look a bit more in closer and in depth at these images. And please do have a think about subscribing to my channel. If you enjoyed my video, please pop me a comment. I love hearing from you. I absolutely find it so awesome to see these messages pop up on my phone saying I got a new comment. I plan to do another giveaway again at some point soon, so keep an eye on that. I've ordered some things in that I saw on sale and I thought I had to share with you. I also have a really, really exciting announcement coming up and I'm just waiting on the final details to be able to share it with you. So keep an eye on my channel. I've got some really cool news that I am totally gobsmacked over. So thank you so much for joining me and enjoy looking at the cards. Take care. Bye.